Now let's take a look at arranging and organising the tracks in a project. Buses can be treated in exactly the same way as tracks. As we saw in a previous video, inserting tracks can be done by right clicking in the track head area and selecting one of the insert options from there. Tracks can be deleted by either right clicking the in focus track in its header area and selecting delete track from the context menu or selecting multiple tracks and right clicking in the header area of one of them. The tracks menu can also be used for this. Note that all selected tracks or buses as well as the in focus one will respond to this command. So make sure that you only have the tracks you wish to delete selected. The delete command will also display how many tracks you're about to delete. As well as deleted, tracks can also be wiped. That is the data is removed from them, but the empty track will remain, and that's chosen here from the tracks menu as well. Once selected, they can also be cloned. Select the tracks to copy, and more than one can be cloned at once. And either select the option from here in the tracks menu, or once again, right click in the header area of one of them and select it from the context menu. Either method will open the clone track dialog, where we can set our preferences as to what is cloned, such as any events or clips on the tracks, properties, effects sends, also how many repetitions you'd like and whereabouts in the project you'd like the first track to be inserted. Tracks are renamed by double clicking the track name field and typing a name you want. To move quickly from one field on a track to the corresponding field on the next track, press the down arrow. Now you can change the name field again just by pressing enter. You can obviously go back up to the previous track by pressing the up arrow. This will work on any track header control that has focus, including automation lanes. The left and right arrows will change the control focus within the same track header. Note that the track number cannot be changed but will change dynamically as tracks are moved so that they stay sequential throughout. We move tracks or folders by moving the cursor over the track or folder header until it changes to a double headed arrow. At that point we can left click, hold and drag the track to its new position. A blue line indicates its release position. Tracks can also be sorted and this is chosen from the tracks menu. Choosing this option opens a dialog where a sort filter can be set. Clicking on OK performs the sort. Track folders are a way of keeping tracks organised. Once included in a folder, they can be collapsed, hence saving screen space. There is a composite view created, and this can be used to select and edit tracks such as moving, splitting and slip editing included tracks. You may need to drag the height down a little bit, which is done by left clicking and dragging. To move tracks to a folder, first select the tracks that you want included, then right click on one of them and select move to folder. You can choose an existing folder or create a new one. This can be renamed in the same way as tracks. As we've already seen, the folder can be opened and closed using the icon to the left of the folder. Any tracks included in a folder will respond to the mute, solo, record and input echo buttons, as well as the archive button. In the header area, you can see how many tracks are included and what types they are. There's also a text field which can be used to enter a description or notes for the folder. Double click to start text entry. To remove tracks from a folder, select all the tracks you wish to remove, then right click and select remove from folder. Now let's take a look at track icons. Track icons can be useful for visually identifying the types of tracks or instruments on a track. There are large icons available for the track view, console view and inspector. The track view header also has miniature icons to show whether a track is either a MIDI, audio, simple instrument or instrument track, or it can be used to display an icon of your choice. 
Any of the icons can be changed if you wish, and this is done from the main menu Views menu and selecting the Icons submenu. From here, it's possible to have full control over whether icons are shown or not, either globally on mass using the Show Icons control, and to also set each view's icon settings independently. For example, under the Track View settings, it's possible to set whether large or small icons are shown, what type of icon shows in a track header, either the generic ones or to use a track custom icon, and there's also options for if a track header icon is displayed or not. The Track Inspector and console views have controls to show or hide icons and also adjust their size. To change an icon, we either right click on it and select Reset Track Icon or click on the Load Track Icon choice. You can now navigate to an icon of your choice and change it to that instead. They can also be dragged onto tracks in the media browser. To do that, open the browser, select the track icons preset, and again, navigate to an icon of your choice. Simply drag and drop it onto the track to change it. Finally, before we leave this slightly more in-depth look at the track view, it's worth mentioning that track controls can be grouped together either permanently or in a quick group. Quick grouping is very simple. Select the tracks you wish to include in a group. Hold down the control key and then change a control or an option. For example, to mute all of these selected tracks, I click on one of the mute buttons. Remember, non-adjacent tracks can be added to or removed from a selection using Control plus click. To select or deselect a continuous block of tracks, click on the first track you wish to include, and then shift click on the last one. All tracks between those two are selected or deselected. To quick group all tracks at once, deselect all using Control shift a then hold down the Control key and click on the control you wish to change. Deselect all works in the same way as if all tracks were selected. We'll look at quick grouping throughout the various videos when it becomes relevant, and we'll see how to set up permanent groups in the mixing section. You should now have a good idea on how the track view works, and how to select and manipulate the tracks and data within it.